Yeah, 100 USD wager. Uh, let me just uh, fix the overlay for this one. We're going to go best of seven this time. From Moxie vs AJ, who had a bit of trash talk, a little bit of friendly banter for each other on Twitter about this. AJ says he used this car before Metza. Oh, so AJ's got, he's got smoke for everybody. He's coming at Metza Norris for, uh, you know, stealing his car. Pick. He wants all the cars. He's played Octane today, and now, now he played Batmobile, and then he played whatever this is called. I can't even remember. <laughs> I'm going to be completely honest. I can't remember the name of this thing. Um, but just to keep you guys up to date with what's been going on in the EU 1v1 uh, ranked ladder recently. Uh, AJ got rank 1 just the other day. Okay, bit of an open net miss there from Moxie. He almost uh, wrapped himself around it, but he's going to wave goodbye to his lead, I think. Oh, never mind. AJ's missed it as well. Moxie slaps it from long. Hold on, I'll tell you guys the one story in a second as we settle down. Okay, there we go. No open nets for either player. Um, so yeah, AJ got rank 1 by beating Khaled a couple of times. Obviously, he beat a bunch of other people as well to climb up. But his last two wins were against Khaled. And then I think Moxie took uh, rank 1 away from AJ as they played. And then I think AJ took it back uh, by playing Moxie again. I think they've, they've been going back and forth, shall we say, uh, in uh, 1v1. But most recently, TRK took it by beating um, AJ twice, and I think he also beat Monkey Moon, he told me, so... A lot of players right now, in like that top 10 that I read out to you guys earlier, players like uh, uh, Khaled, TRK, uh, Rawas, AJ, I know Daniel's playing ones a lot, not sure if he's playing rank though, Moxie, Appjack. Um, all, all these guys are grinding ones, Monkey Moon as well, they're all playing ranked ones, which is... Really, really cool to see. It's reminiscent of uh, when we use salt mine, or we, when we use leaderboard to have salt mine qualification uh, determination. Beautiful flick from Moxie. Now, if you missed his straw match the other day, um, where he took down iRicky on USC servers, then you're gonna need to w look out for this guy's flicks. He's got such a quick setup for what well, I wouldn't even call a reverse 45 degree flick anymore. It's more like a rever uh, like a reverse 90 degree flick. He gets side onto the ball sometimes. Um, in the exact same setup as a reverse 45 would be. Um, but he does it so quickly and unleashes the flick so quickly that it's pretty much impossible to counter. It's definitely the best flick that I've seen recently uh, on my stream. Moxie, obviously a very fast player. He's been adding aerial, aerial play to his game recently as well, so he's going to be extremely dangerous. But AJ has always been known for his aerial game. I think that's where he should have the edge today. And then Moxie, maybe the ground game advantage. Defense, we'll have to wait and see. It looks like Moxie's going to try and chase AJ around. He saw how effective that strategy was when Appjack applied it. Going for it himself. But AJ's going to tie the game just inside halftime with a brilliant 50-50. Uh, really absorbed that one well. Just a single jump and then he bounces right back down to the ground. It's a lot harder to time those than it looks. AJ does it perfectly. Um, is the title correct, by the way? I don't know if it is. I'll... I'll just change it in case... It wasn't updated. Simon68 and KingP187, thanks to the brand new Primes. A oh, big tug from AJ Moxie, not able to get any side onto the save. Just left it hanging on the goal line. LCF... LDRL, thanks for gifting a sub to Stoned IDN and also Obi Juan Takobi, thanks to the brand new Prime. GG Walrus, thanks to the six month Prime. I think I've said thanks to everybody, but if I forgot you, let me know in the chat. So, kickoff goal for Moxie. That was a pretty clean wave dash recovery after jumping low into the ball. You've got to be so careful when you're doing those low jumps into the ball because if you go too low, the ball's going to go right over you. Um, but if you can get it right, then the recovery is just blisteringly quick. Moxie, little look to the side, sees he's not being challenged, and then launches the flick through straight past AJ. And that is power for you. Even though AJ was pretty close <laughs> to being in the right spot. In fact, I'd say he pretty much was in the right spot for 99% of flicks. Moxie is just different. He flicks it so quickly, and uh, the setup is so clean that AJ is going to need to start lunging into some challenges to stop it from just happening every time. But there AJ does. He's not going to sit back in his net after witnessing a flick like that one. Well, certainly not every time. Moxie should just keep going for the same strategy, though. This time he leans a bit too far away from the ball, or rather let the ball roll too far forward on his car. And he does not get the uh, flick to go off. 
Moxie's flicks are the best in the world. Well, it's like I said, out of all of the, you know, the the absolute top tier players in the world right now, um, you know, the tier one players, I, I'd put Moxie and AJ both in tier one for um, the 1v1 players all around the world. And out of all those tier one 1v1 players, I think Moxie's, yes, I think he's got the best flicks out of all of the tier one guys. Um, I've, I've not seen Lion Blaze uh, play too much ones recently. He's possibly still tier one. And uh, he's always had a legendary flick, of course. That recovery is good enough for AJ. Nice little defensive flip reset as well to give himself superior boost management. If you're wondering why did AJ do that as well, it's because he wanted to have a flip to accelerate with, but Moxie still managed to break him down here. Goes up by two. I had somebody in the chat yesterday, and there's nothing wrong with this, by the way, nothing wrong with, uh, you know, asking questions like this or making comments like this, but somebody uh, criticizing pointless flip resets that pl uh, players go for, and little plays like that that can kind of look pointless at times. Um, you're wondering, well, why did AJ go for a reset? Well, it's, it's all about acceleration. It's all about momentum. If he has a flip to play with there, which he can't have with a single jump or a double jump, uh, then he can use the flip to get speed into the ball rather than using more boosts to do the same thing. So all about efficiency for these guys. And it's not difficult for players at this level to just get a reset whenever they want one uh, these days. So game one, Moxie. Off to a flyer. I think uh, AJ might be switching to the Octane after this. I, I'm not sure because he has not played badly in this car at all. He's, uh, he's had a good game, but he definitely looked a lot more comfortable mechanically in the Octane when he played against Jack. That was when he looked the most comfortable mechanically. Obviously, he was a bit too easy to demo, so he switched to the Batmobile against uh, Jack's very physical style. Um, but when it came to mechanics, when it came to recoveries, efficiency, AJ definitely, uh, the three different cars I've seen him play today, look the best in the bat. So, I, I, or rather the Octane. So yeah, he, he will be switching back to Octane. That's no surprise. And he's going to try and keep up with Moxie, who certainly outpaced him in that first game. I think all these guys, Jack, AJ, Moxie, they're, they're all very similar when they try and play quickly. The, uh, I think the, the AJ Octane is going to be able to match Moxie at the very least. Moxie, here dribbling across the box. What did the boost steal? AJ saw it coming and beat him to it. Already, that Octane confidence shining through. <laughs> the air dribble is good. That one last touch was the one that AJ needed to secure his first goal in style. Just a quick note, by the way, I'm going to be streaming again tomorrow and I'm going to be trying to... Oh, wow, what placement from Moxie. Well played. Did not waste any time on the setup either. Um, like I was saying, I'm going to try and stream more show matches tomorrow and also Monday. Um... After that, I think all of the top ones players who are currently grinding 1v1 on the EU server will be in Saudi Arabia for the uh, for the KSA LAN that's coming up. So at that point, show matches between the very top tier players will probably come to an end. I think um, there will probably still be a couple of top tier players in the in, in and around, but definitely we won't have the same amount of options to to pick between. Yeah, AJ lost to Jack yes, uh, Jorias yesterday 4-3, lost to Jack today 3-2. Both really good series from what I saw. I didn't catch the entire AJ Jorias series, but from what I did see from it, uh, both players look to be in exceptional form. Uh, Jack obviously today surprised AJ with a very physical style, then AJ surprised him back with a Batmobile pickup, um, and then Jack just iced it up in game five, controlled the game. Wow, quarter, quarter pitch for Moxie, that is aggressive. Uh, I don't think that's working the majority of the time for him, but he knows if it doesn't, he's at the worst going to probably have a recovery. But if AJ just walks around and Moxie trying to sneak up behind the ball here for a challenge. You can notice he's trying, he's trying to get goal, uh, not goal side, he's trying to get opposite AJ so that he can challenge. But AJ just saw that coming a mile away, walks the ball around him and into the net. Uh, did I see Noah's tweet? Yeah, I saw Noah's tweet. I saw Rise tweet. Uh, you know, quick thing to, or I guess quick mention on the whole topic of the KSA LAN. Um, oh my goodness, what a flick. Moxie, let me chat for a second here. Can you calm down? 
Can you just give me a moment? <laughs> That's unreal. Um, yeah, just on the topic of the KSA LAN, I'm sure there's going to be lots of uh, people giving, you know, opinions on uh, every aspect of it. Um, but I'll only be answering questions re related to the KSA LAN, the uh, Gamers 8 LAN that's coming up that are Rocket League related. I'm not going to be talking about any other subject. Um, I don't think there's really anything good that can come from that for me or for any of us um, to talk about anything other than Rocket League in this context on social media. So I, if you've got Rocket League related questions about that, I'll be happy to answer them. Um, but for everything else, I'll just be not answering any questions because, yeah, you know, I, I, I think it's, people can say whatever they want. I respect the uh, respect all of the opinions and I respect all, all the uh, takes that are thrown around. Well, that, maybe I should, shouldn't say all. There's definitely been some dumb ones, but you know, I, I respect uh, Noah Rise Moist a lot. Just to be specific, uh, but I'm not going to be talking in any detail about uh, those tweets. Moxie darting away to another mid-game lead here. AJ has looked mechanically comfortable in the matchup. But Moxie is just a very, very efficient player. The difference so far is that AJ seems to be a bit more methodical with his setups. And Moxie has got that just unleash button. He just goes, sends the ball on target as quickly as he can. And it is very difficult to stop. Oh, that's a big pump. Moxie clips AJ on the back wall as the ball loops into the net. AJ would have had the save. <coughs> Excuse me, it would have had to had to check just to make sure, but yeah, AJ would have saved that. Remember this is the best of seven, but AJ will need to figure out pretty quickly how he can counter Moxie, because although he's looked comfortable in his own car, he does not look comfortable dealing with what Moxie's throwing at him. This rapid pace of offense, this complete uh, disregard for AJ is proven to be quite difficult to beat. And by that I mean that Moxie, wow, that is ridiculous. He almost escaped with chain wave dashes. There are multiple surfaces, but AJ, again, trying to really be precise with his uh, goals, trying to be very precise with his movement. This is really what the, the first two games against Abjack looked like, where both players were weighing each other up perfectly. They were battling back and forth for every single midfield play. But Moxie has gone for chaos here. He is uh, playing with a very explosive nature, which is obviously working very well for him at the moment. AJ staying on the ball. That denied Moxie a back corner boost grab, knowing that AJ could turn around and score an open net. Had he gone for it, AJ gets around Moxie once and manages to slot the ball top corner past Moxie's pre-jump as well. That was an excellent 50-50. AJ faked a floor pinch there. Or, you know, maybe he was going for it in the first place, but after realizing Moxie could see it coming and was moving in to counter it, he got a very nice hitbox on the ball to deny Moxie the 50 he was looking for. Uh, speaking of, that's exactly the 50 mocks he's looking for here. And once again, he just gets right to attacking. No time wasted. Moxie gets into an offensive position. He is just so smooth with the wave dashes. Whether he's wave dashing on one surface, then another, or whether he's dodging into a wall and then wave dashing immediately afterwards, this is just unreal to watch. He is just so quick at the moment. He, he always was a quick player, but Moxie's taken it to another level recently, both on the ground and the air. And he's left AJ with a lot to think about. AJ kind of forced to make a play on the ball there. He knows if he just lets Moxie dribble the ball into the back corner, there's no way he's going to score three goals in 30 seconds. He just went for the ball, hoped that Moxie would play carelessly. Moxie did not. Now AJ trying for a placement shot and he gets it with a gorgeous touch. It's somewhat of a pinch, somewhat of a half volley. It's definitely perfect timing. That is 
brilliant from AJ. I think the volatility that chain kickoffs, multiple kickoffs in a row, will actually give him a better chance to come back than just simply grinding out one goal from a three goal deficit. Oh, good try from AJ again. It's not going to work out, but he really gave it a go here. Credit to him. Just like in the Jack series, he didn't give up on a game two that looked like it was got it getting away from him. He still went for the win condition. Moxie coming out too strong, though, in the opening games here. Winning game two in the end quite comfortably, but any drop off in level here from Moxie and AJ is going to be right there with him. So if he can keep this up from from now until the end of the series, I'll be so impressed. The, the, the pace that Moxie's playing at, the recoveries that he's nailing time and time again, the efficiency of his movement is just world class. That's against a player who is known for that. So AJ, stick it to the Octane. I think that's probably the correct choice. Um, I think if he, maybe if he goes down one more game, he'll give the Batmobile a try, but that looked uh, decent, I'd say, in game two. From him, Moxie, not able to get around the ball and secure the briefly open net. He's just got the momentum to continue attacking, though. AJ, a bit stuck in the mud here. Moxie. Looking to get another shot off before AJ can reposition. And he does. AJ grinds to a halt. Moxie runs rings around him. And opens the scoring once again. Going to get Arsenal to play a show match against the EU players. Has Arsenal been playing any 1v1 or Rettles? I can't imagine that either one of them would have been grinding ones in preparation for uh, Gamers 8 because they've got Daniel on their team. But I might be wrong. Is this NA's elite? I mean, AJ's looked very competitive. Like, yeah, he's lost to Darius and Jack and he's losing to Moxie, but these are the top three players in EU. Like, <laughs> let's not get confused here. That is the that is the top three from Europe. If you're going to pick three players right now who are the best in Europe in 1v1, it would be those three. And, uh, you know, you've got players like Luis, Raziers, Monkey Moon, maybe, um, next in line. But he's taken on the big three between yesterday and today. Uh, Arsenal would rage quit. <laughs> That's fair enough. That is fair enough. Um, and he's he's been competitive with them, you know? I, I think if you had a rematch AJ versus Jack, it would be very interesting because they had a lot of tricks uh, for each other and I'd love to see another series between the two. As for Jorias and AJ, I mean, Jorias is just somebody... He's a really unique player. He doesn't practice much Rocket League. He doesn't play 1v1 ever. But he still, every time he shows up in a 1v1 event or a 1v1 show match, has the potential to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone in the world. But one thing I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt is that having low hours in Rocket League, having, you know, low hours past two, um, although a lot of pros think that makes them cool and uh, makes, uh, makes them think that girls are going to like them more, uh, you know, that's up for debate. But what's not up for debate is that it will lead to inconsistency in gameplay if nothing else you know it, it will definitely lead to inconsistency in gameplay so although you might have a day where you're peaking you'll probably have days where you're not so i reckon you know jory is is and probably always will be a guy who can show up and beat anyone on his day but if he's got low hours which he always does then he can also show up and just fall apart um i think he was swept in a show match varsovsky on my channel if i'm not mistaken did I make that up? I think Oski 3 would him in his most recent show match on my channel. Unless Jory has played against... Um, did he play against Daniel since then? He may have done. I can't remember. Do you guys remember if he played against Daniel before or after the Oski match? Um, but yeah, long story, long story short about Jory is you all, you all know he's world class. He's an insane player. I love the guy. But he doesn't play, he doesn't play Rocket League much. So he's definitely got... Uh, less consistency with his ones game compared to the guys who are constantly grinding, guys like Jack, guys like Moxie, guys like AJ. So if they rematch, could go either way. If AJ Jory's rematch, could go either way. Jack, AJ rematch, could go either way. Um, I'd say the same thing about this, even if it goes 4-0. You know, that's just the way it is with uh, the top level ones players. Always has been, always will be. You know, these guys are so, so close in skill. Really just comes down to who's feeling it on the day, who can come up with a better winning strategy. Right now it appears to be Moxie. It's a long series though and AJ's fighting hard for game three. Oh wow, what a challenge. I Moxie. 
AJ had more momentum. He stayed pretty low on this one as well. We're going to watch it again. Look how, look how low AJ is. He hits the middle of the ball, but Moxie just deflects it low. It wasn't just about the hitbox there for Moxie. It was about the timing of his hit. He let AJ hit the ball into him, uh, and he pretty much didn't 50-50. He just blocked. He's out of position after the kickoff. AJ ties. Yeah, you know, all that explanation is just to say that I think AJ's up there in the very top tier. I put both these guys tier one. I put Jory Zapjack tier one. I put players like Khaled, TRK, Rowass tier one, KV1's tier one, First Killer and Daniel. They're all tier one 1v1 players. That's my top 10 in no particular order. Um, because they've shown consistency. They've shown results in tournaments, show matches. Some of them for years, some of them recently. You know, the Tier 2 is not far off Tier 1. There's, uh, you know, more players in, in Tier 2 who are able to take games, able to take series off Tier 1. Here comes AJ again. Slow setup. Moxie's been forced into some heroic saves here before chasing AJ up the back wall. Sidewall, I should say, with a demo attempt, but that was an overextension. AJ air dribbles over him. And dunks the ball into the net. Moxie went completely all in for the demo there. Didn't get it. Used all his boost to do so. And AJ was able to air dribble past him. Make a tier list. Maybe I should make a tier list. But I, I mean, I could tell you pretty much. I've, I've seen enough 1v1 recently to know pretty well who my tier 2 is. I mean, for North America, I'd put my tier 2 as Evo. He's the very, very top of tier 2. Uh, then you've also got Lion Blaze, Chronic. Um, South America, you've got to say Ray's Bull right now. I think he's established himself as Tier 2. Um, although, you know, is he NA? Well, I'm putting him in Sam for 1v1. Um, but yeah, NA, Sam, whatever. Ray's Bull's in there. Uh, EU, like I said, you got Razier's Luis, Monkey Moon. In um, Middle East, you've got Fahad. You've got Naupo. And there's got to be another Middle East player in there as well. Well, I'm not sure who I would, who I would put. Maybe Wisty's tier two. It's hard to say though. He's not had as many show matches uh, as the other guys. Um, I, I don't think Ahmad's playing uh, enough one v one recently. Not sure if he's playing enough ones to be in there. Yeah, Clears has definitely played a fair bit. Yeah, I, I, you know that that's like roughly the list. That's like if I'm putting ten players tier one, ten tier two, it's kind of like that. That's the names I'd say off the top of my head. I might have missed someone, but I think that's mostly who you're looking at right now. Ruas tier one, bro, tier one. Ruas ridiculous. Yeah, back to the present. AJ hunting a late game lead and he gets it. Moxie denied the 50-50 he was looking for. Denied the big clear he was looking for. He actually tried to get the ball over or the top of AJ. He would have loved to have a 50-50 in the back corner. AJ just sat back, didn't give it to him. Moxie will come away with the ball. And he's got AJ a bit out of position here. Oh, good demo. AJ just manages to get Supersonic and take Moxie out of the game. That was a very small margin for error on that one. How fast is Moxie's recovery? He has to do it in reverse. Has to wait for the ball to come to him. AJ sticks on it, but Moxie gets the center. Unreal zero second goal for Moxie. He needed to play this one perfectly. He had to manipulate that final 50-50 in his favor. Get it to bounce into the middle while keeping all of his momentum so he could catch up to it. And now he's given AJ some real trouble. On the verge of going up three games to zero in the best of seven. And he might with that demo in the back corner. How's his recovery? Oh, AJ spawns right in the way of the ball. That was a brilliant genius decision by AJ. Moxie's going to fling himself in. Try and catch AJ off guard. He does with another demo. I think AJ might be able to defend this. Yes, he will. Moxie with the boost seal. Has AJ under immense pressure. Boost does not spawn for AJ, but look at AJ's boost management. He's actually wasted almost none in all of this defensive duty, but he gives the ball away. Doesn't get a 50, doesn't get a clear, and Moxie wins. He just had all the momentum, and he did not care at all. He's throwing himself in aggressively time and time again. And AJ is just not ready for that level of aggression. He's waiting for a moment to breathe. He's waiting for Moxie to fake a challenge. And it's just not happening. GG's so far. But not GG's overall. We're in a best of seven here.
Did AJ beat Jack? No, AJ lost uh, game five to Jack. He That was a really interesting series though, Rattles, because game number one and two, it was an Octane mirror match. And Jack, they, they were completely evenly matched except for one thing, and that was Jack's like bumping and demoing. He just like bumped the, the, the living daylights out of AJ. So AJ switched to Batmobile, and then he won two games in a row because he was just, uh, you know, harder to bump. So it looked like AJ might reverse sweep, but Jack uh, figured out a way to beat the bat in game five. So very interesting series between those two. This one's been just Moxie's aggression. I think both players are evenly matched mechanically. AJ with an edge in the air, Moxie with an edge on the ground, but the aggression of Moxie is just catching AJ off guard time and time again. He just goes and AJ's not ready for him. He's not able to absorb Moxie's challenges. He's not able to counter Moxie's challenges often enough to stop Moxie from going for them. And you know, if, if he's gonna stop Moxie from playing like this, he's got to punish these lunging challenges. He's got to, you know, force Moxie to bounce off the ball more often. But it's just not happening. Moxie catches AJ off his goal line as he seeks to sweep in the 1v1 wager. You reckon Naupo had beat tier twos even on his for, uh, bad form recently? I wouldn't say Naupo's had bad form recently. He, you know, took Rowas to five. He had an off day versus Razier's, but Naupo's still ridiculous. He's, uh, you know, obviously a talented player. I say tier two 1v1 players are the guys who can compete with tier one, um, but aren't consistent enough to be tier one. And that's why I put Naupo tier two, because he is he's definitely not consistent enough to be tier one, but he can be, he's, he's good enough to beat anyone uh, on his day. Same with like uh, players like Razier's, you know, he's, he's got big peaks. He can win tournaments if he shows up, but he also has uh, more flops. I'll make a proper tier list, I think. Would you guys like that? Should, should we do that? Maybe I could do that tomorrow. Uh, Toxic. Oh yeah, Toxic might be tier two as well. Though Toxic's not had as many tournament performances, so it's harder to say. Yeah, I could do a tier list tomorrow or Monday. A 1v1 tier list. If you guys want to see one. I'm not going to do it today because I'll think about it. I always think about my tier list. Moxie. Walks around AJ. Who is forced to go. If you're wondering why does AJ dive here. I'm sorry to show again AJ. But what you've done is the, the correct play. But the reason AJ goes is because. He's worried about Moxie driving ahead of the ball. And demoing him. If he just sits on the goal line and waits. Uh, there's always a chance Moxie goes ahead of the ball and demos him just like Apjack did in two games in a row in the previous show match of the day oh my goodness Moxie's flicks man he is just the best <laughs> he's the best right now at, at 1v1 flicks this is absurd look how quickly he sets up and releases <laughs> it's just in the blink of an eye <laughs> he just flings the ball over you again I've got to say AJ is not playing badly defensively he is positioning well but Moxie is just playing out of his mind, so even if you are in the right spot, even if you're making correct decisions, it doesn't matter because Moxie's just too good. Offense will always beat defense if the offense pops off and peaks. And that is not popping off or peaking from AJ. Starting to fall apart here. Moxie looking for the boost seal on spawn, gets it with perfect timing to frustrate AJ even more. AJ keeps up his momentum. Moxie counters with a block near the wall. That's still a result though for AJ. The fact he's able to even out the boost disadvantage is a win for him. But what's not so good news is that Moxie still has the ball. But he relinquishes possession with the miss hit. AJ can't quite sneak it past him. That was definitely open. And Moxie steals the boost from under his nose again. AJ is doing everything he can to keep up with Moxie at the moment. But just like against Jack game two. It's those close quarters boost grabs that are just not going in favor of the American. Reset for AJ. You feel like he has to score here and he doesn't. Tries to delay, tries to go underneath Moxie who just goes straight for the ball. He forces the outplay and AJ doesn't make one. Moxie destroying AJ here. And the fact that AJ is not playing too badly here shows how well Moxie's playing. I mean, AJ's definitely had mistakes. His aerial game's not looked as comfortable. I feel like mentally now he's really been battered and bruised, losing game three to a zero second equalizer, followed by constant aggression in overtime, is going to be very difficult to rebound from. And like I said earlier, you know, regardless of the result, 4-0, 4-3, either way, you know, you, you, don't, you can't write off either one of these players in a rematch. They've shown that they're both world class many times 
recently and for AJ for years. So this is definitely a learning experience for him. The aggression of Moxie's proven to be too much. It's forced mistakes and oh my goodness. He has been unrelenting. Not just with his aggression in the challenge game, with his aggression in offense, but his refusal to stop trying to score. <laughs> he could just try and kill some time here and guarantee the win, but he wants more. He's not satisfied with 7-1. He wants 8-1. He wants 9-1. And uh, he's taking risks to get more goals. Tight angle shot misses and gives AJ one back. So absolute confidence from Moxie. He has become a different beast in recent months. Gone is the calculated approach. Gone is the... The player we had months ago, oh my word, Moxie tries to break the bar with a ground pitch that was completely merciless. If that doesn't tell you everything we need to know about Moxie, I don't know what will. Like I said, gone are the days where this guy's going to hold back, try and place everything, try and be perfect in the setup and try and make sure he doesn't make mistakes. He just goes for it now. He's so confident. That would have been the fastest pinch shot we've seen in a 1v1 show match had it been just a couple of inches lower. <laughs> AJ knows that he's just up against a different kind of player right now. Any top ones player watching this will fear what they're seeing. Oh, I say that, but actually a lot of guys are just as confident as Moxie is, so maybe I tell a lie. Uh, well, what I'll say is, anyone who thinks they can beat Moxie in this form, let me know, and uh, we'll see. We've got another two days of uh, one show match spam. So if you think you can take him down, just give me a shout. AJ, going to try and make this more respectable. He's going to try and make the impossible comeback happen. Who do you guys think uh, can take him down, chat? Who do you guys have as uh, the counter to Moxie in this, uh, in this farm? He is playing unbelievably well. Jack or Jory is... Well, Jack Ajorias went to the ace match with AJ. Ajorias beat him 4-3. Jack beat him 3-2. Moxie's about to sweep him. He's trying to go for a back wall rebound here. He actually gets it, but not far enough. AJ saw it coming. You know, I feel like based on uh, the way the ranked leaderboard has gone, you've got to give TRK a shot, I think. TRK would be an interesting matchup for him. He's more familiar with Moxie than AJ is. More familiar with this kind of... Uh, constant ball chasing. You've got players like Naipo who do this very, very well coming out of the Middle East. Closest thing that we've seen to Moxie here in North America is I'd probably say Evo. I think Evo on some days can do this where he just plays super fast. It's kind of like, I'd say Drally, Naipo, Evo. They're the three players that come to mind when you think about this play style, but nobody's done it like this. Let me just make it clear you know there's some players who play like you know somewhat like this but not exactly like this nobody's done it with the best flick in the game right now in their back pocket anytime they want it nobody's done it with such a calculated but aggressive challenge game that was impressive that was very very impressive moxie destroys aj one of the other <laughs> aj is one of the best ones players in the world he's Easily a top 10 ones player worldwide. Moxie rolls him. So, yeah, big, le big uh, learning experience there for AJ, I'm sure. No doubt he'll bounce back uh, stronger.